Guys, welcome back to School of Cars Saints. Question and answer session number two. I'm here with self-titled question master, Jacko. And since the first Q&A team, they have been flooding in the questions. Overwhelmed. Overwhelmed by a lot of the questions about um, sore hands. We'll get onto that in a bit. Um, but actually the first, we've got three for you, but the first one um, that isn't an official question, but someone was wondering whether, uh, how many pairs of those red t-shirts we had, because I think they were worried <laughs> about, they were getting a little bit of overkill, so we're yeah. rocking the Oakley today. Anyway. Two pairs is the actual answer. I've got two, two, two t-shirts is the actual answer. And, uh, and a washing machine. We've got washing. some new kits coming from, from a quite exciting mm. new partnership with a yes. clothing company, so look out for that soon. So the first question comes from, um, it was an Instagram live that we did um, last uh, after the workshop in Liverpool on Saturday. And it was a question around um, how to build muscle using calisthenics as opposed to weights. Um, and Tim, if you'd like to kick us off with that one. Yeah, Jacko, uh, this is a to hot topic for Jacko actually, because it, it relates back to some of the stuff we talked about in the last Q&A around understanding what resistance is and the body's well, the central nervous system's perception of res resistance, it really doesn't matter um, what we're using. So body weight is as effective as building muscle as uh, some other forms that are using barbells or dumbbells or whatever. It's just that calisthenics kind of lends itself more to some more sort of like complete movement patterns, a little bit more total uh, muscle activation as opposed to an isolated bicep curl or something. So there's something for me around like, again, it depends what you want from your training. It is totally possible to build some muscle. You need to have the right rep ranges. You need to be using the right tempos and those are the sorts of things which are gonna maximize your opportunity. And I'll come onto that in a second. But just this, again, if you want to build specific body parts or you're looking for more of a bodybuilding program, it's just more effective to do that using dumbbells, barbells and whatever else but not to say it's not possible I don't yeah. know what you think about that yeah so if you want to um, it, like Tim says depending on what you want out of your training um, if you want to look like a bodybuilder then you need to train like a bodybuilder but if you want to be fit healthy active have a way of training that you don't need much equipment you can do that at home for example like calisthenics is, is great for that like neither of us use weights particularly no. now at all um, t certainly for his upper body stuff um, so it, it depends. It really depends what you're after. But in terms of building muscle, if we're gonna, we want to be hitting rep ranges and rest ranges and tempos, like Tim said, that put us in a hypertrophy, meaning building muscle uh, sort of phase or state. Uh, so just go into that for them, Tim, so that we can. Yeah. So if we break it down broadly speaking, we've got two different types of hypertrophy. When we talk about hypertrophy. We're talking about increasing muscle mass. So we can have mechanical hypertrophy or metabolic hypertrophy. And the mechanical side is when we're going to use rep ranges of probably our optimum between six and ten. We extend the eccentric tempo, so we're going to lower down a little bit slower. So if we're doing a pull-up, it might be six to ten pull-ups, lowering down slowly for four seconds. And what that eccentric does is it places a little bit more stress on the muscle, causes a little bit more trauma effectively. And then the benefit of that being that we start to increase the contractile component of the muscle. So we're breaking down the sarcomeres, we then put more sarcomeres into the muscle, the muscle gets bigger as a result of getting improve its ability to be able to produce more force. Now the other side of metabolic... And that's one that we are interested in for calisthenics yeah, to be able absolutely. to produce more force. Yeah, that one is functional hypertrophy. Let's put it that way. You're going to get stronger and bigger, which is good because I don't think anybody really wants to be big and weak, particularly. I don't, anyway. Because <laughs> yeah. then you look like, yeah, it looks fake. So the other side of it is the metabolic side is actually working rep ranges maybe between 12 and 20, and then you're just starting to increase the, the plasma volume in the muscle, you're pumping it up effectively, but you're not actually making it that much stronger. Now there is some research out there that we're sort of aware of, it's quite current around increasing hypertrophy by um, elevating lactate levels in the muscle, and you can get that by doing these larger like set ranges, but my argument in that would be really that it doesn't fit that well with calisthenics that's yeah. really where people are going to be doing like knee extensions or bicep curls you're smashing up the volume a little bit but you're not actually getting that much stronger now there's probably people in the bodybuilding world that may disagree with me it's not a spe spe uh, spe specialist area it's a hard word to say it's not a specialist area of mine we understand the principles of what we try and do but I, w I come from a strength and conditioning background i never need to get an athlete big for the sake of being big yeah. we're always looking at improving force production so that's kind of where we would advise you to go six to ten work hard work slow on that eccentrics rest periods 60 to 90 seconds you've got to bash out some work in these yeah. sets and then volume wise total number of sets yeah like three to five six sets i'll be put through per exercise and you need to do it quite consistently you need to be starting to hit some decent um 
breadth of exercises across the week. So whether it's three, four days of, of specific work, um, takes time. And the other thing, that Jackie, just what do you think about nutrition and that sort of side of yeah, if we're trying, to, if we're trying to increase like muscle mass and we need to be in a calorie surplus so that we're actually we need to be eating more total calories as well as increasing your uh, protein intake to help with that growth and repair but you'll need to be taking on carbohydrates to fuel those sessions so the sessions can be effective and part of that recovery it's not just about protein um, and we you know we try to make sure that um, or advocates of eat if you call it clean eating or natural or healthy that we're trying to eat complete foods, stuff that we're cooking ourselves at home, so we know what's going in it. Um, making sure you've got plenty of veg on your plate. If you're thinking of plate size, those sort of thing, um, half veg, quarter protein, quarter carbohydrate, but coming from good sources that you know what they are like, rice or potatoes for your veg. I'm a massive fan of oats. I'm quite well known in our gym for bringing me a big bowl of oats. <laughs> you don't oats even bring it in like a Tupperware, it just brings a bowl yeah, with well, a spoon in the yeah, side I originally of it in the did it with Tupperware, but it's just easier just to bring it in the bowl and just crack on with it. But um, Oats are great uh, carbohydrate source. Carbohydrates get a bad name and everyone doesn't want to take them because they think they're worried that it's going to make them fat, but it's about the, the quantity and the quality of the stuff you're eating. But, je but if you're going to try to increase your mass and the total amount of muscle that you're building, your, what you're eating needs to supplement that. If you're going to work your ass off in the gym, you, you need to make sure you're eating well and correctly and healthily. I think that my last point on this is just around how you're going to structure your training. So my advice with the calisthenics would not be to obsess about using calisthenics to get big. If you kind of stick to those rep ranges that I talked about and you're starting to use exercises which are difficult, you're training hard, so you, like you're getting to the end of a, an eight rep set and you kind of that is your literally your last rep, you need to get to that point where you're pushing that on. Get plenty of exercises in your program. I've actually, to be fair, like from my own perspective, starting to do a little bit more of that kind of work. Yeah. The last 12 to 18 months for me work-wise has been rough and I've, I feel like I've dropped off. So my program at the moment is supersets. It's simple exercises, it's just volume. But I'm not over obsessing about the, 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 the eccentric component of, of the ex exercises because ultimately, my calisthenics training and what my physique is able to do, it's got to go somewhere else. So I'm, I'm, I'm just, enjoying it and, and not kind of like drilling it too strictly I yeah, think yeah. see what happens and, and again you'll respond differently to us you might respond really well to a 10 rep range Jacko responds quite well to go like lower quite reps. lower reps yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you got to play around with it a little bit yeah. but um, I always look at gymnasts it's a great example look at a gymnast they're not training specifically for bulk they train a lot they train high tension movements um, they train well and they eat well, look the size and they the look at yeah. I watched them watching the Olympics, and the American gymnastics team, different level shoulders and biceps. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'd take that over any bodybuilder in the world. They look the business. Yeah. Um, and just on that, just like the sort of the fluffy side of things, like we, the thing that we push that's, and I totally, we 100% believe in it, in that if I'm training for a movement, a thing that I'm trying to achieve, whether it's just as simple as a, a frog stand or whether it's as complex as a flag, you're training to achieve something that when you do that and achieve that, like we define that impossible, one, it feels amazing, but two, you'll get fitter, you'll get stronger, you'll build muscle as a result of doing, being able to do that thing that you feel awesome that um, once you can do it, but you're not obsessing about looking in the mirror at what you look like, that will just grow organically change as you work hard towards achieving those things. So um, from, a, from a, a more holistic viewpoint like that, flipping your training around rather than to look good or just lose body fat or whatever it is that actually train to do something and then just see how your body changes and reacts to you training towards that thing that's a big that's a big thing for yeah. me the, the second question is about head position in um, in push-ups and how what 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 sort of alignment should we have our head in and how do we stop our head from restricting our range of motion so coming down like if your nose touches the floor but you don't you feel like you've got a bit more range in there um, where would you go with that, Tim? Yeah, well, I think this came off the back of our Challenge Tuesday, number 46, I think, where I, they've snitched on me. Like, no one likes a class snitch. No, it was you because guys. Because he lost. They did. And, and, and like, I'm like, let me... I'm, Thank I'm, you to everybody that, that pointed out Tim's incorrect... It was particularly Instagram, uh, actually, a bit of YouTube, but Facebook so thought somebody. I did very well. <laughs> um, the, 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 the thing is about... I, as an aside note, I didn't pick up Dave's poor hamstring range, but what, he's at, what people actually calling me out on is I've actually got quite tight shoulders my stress levels of, 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 of late have been quite high and when we get stressed the upper traps get tight pecs and shoulders a bit tight because I'm working a lot I travel quite a bit we can find that we get a bit restricted in this upper body so you'll see people do the same thing on a bench press bar comes down head goes up to meet the bar and then comes back out and we're running out of range around the, 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 the c-spine and the shoulders 
So what I actually need to do is just be a little bit more kind of relaxed in that position. I've got a little bit of mobilization work to do. And I actually asked the physio about this. Oh. And the cue that they gave me was to think about just taking some of the tension out of my neck and shoulders. By when I'm doing a push up, I'm gonna try and stay neutral with my chin tucked in, but then keeping my jaw relaxed and the, my tongue just that gently press against the roof of my mouth. So when I come down, and it's actually now a conscious thing that I'm gonna to have to think about because when I come down, especially if I'm trying to beat Dave so it goes fast as I can, <laughs> like I'm trying to rep out, but I just need to go back, build a little bit of technique and form, and it happens the best of us when things fall apart a little bit yeah. and we, we've got stuff, other stuff going on. So that's my kind of thoughts yeah, about yeah. it. So, stay, so the key point is staying neutral, so not extending the neck out. Um, and then that's a really nice cue from Tim there, saying um, you're just going to push your tongue, not like crazily, but just push your tongue towards uh, the top of your mouth. Um, I've had someone say to me once before about trying to make yourself feel like you're making yourself have a double chin, just to keep that neck um, nicely in neutral. Um, and loosen yeah. off the shoulders. Yeah. Get all this sort of business. These, particularly some of the stuff around here, like it's quite difficult to get into, but still in a cloud of mastoid, this guy runs down here. That sort of stuff gets tight and plays around the neck. So a little bit of like, yeah. check out a bit of like neck mobilization and gentle neck stretching stuff yeah. can help. And like Tim was saying, a lot of it comes from um, from what we're doing day to day, like driving or sitting in front of a computer and, and really stretching that neck forward. Um, Stress. So yeah, so trying to trying to be a bit more aware of when you're doing your day to day stuff, like what what sort of what sort of positions are you putting yourself in for long periods? Always trying to train optimally, guys. So alignment is a key thing. Postural control at all times. Even we fall apart as you guys will do. So just check yourself. Go back to basics and rebuild when you need to. Okay. So, question master, yes. enlighten me with question number three. Question three, three is uh, it comes twice because we were, like I say, flooded with these about about <laughs> sore hands. So, both on Instagram. So, Tracy said she did her first frog stand today, and she was very impressed. Um, well done, Tracy. <laughs> but still face planted a little bit at the end. We've all been there. Standard. Um, She's so managing 10 second eccentric pull-ups and isometrics, uh, but her hands are developing big calluses. And can we recommend anything to protect the hands at all? And then um, also Met Sims on Instagram um, said, can we recommend anything for sore hands? Uh, he feels often that um, on exercises he's giving up from fatigue of his hands aching so much. He's been training just under six months for calisthenics and hands are slowly getting tougher and stronger. Uh, do we recommend gloves, gardening gloves, chalk or powder or anything else? <laughs> just to ask, so I will kick off this one Tim just to give you a little bit more time to process <coughs> that um, and I'm just going to hone in on the gardening gloves um, that would very much depend on whether you're planning on doing any gardening <laughs> yeah. whilst you're doing calisthenics yeah, I'm not sure that gardening gloves have got any specific benefits of calisthenics over a set of weightlifting gloves they might be cheaper actually it is something that you see to be fair like joking aside like people will wear gloves for like better grip and more comfort um, some of the gardening gloves you get have like they're almost like rubbery yeah and that actually gives you a decent amount of grip to be fair I'm an advocate of uh, I'd be lying if I said I hadn't once probably about three years ago <laughs> bought these like mitten glove things matchy matchy for me and Tim to wear but um, they were like right string didn't last variation. I need to get to bring them back actually. comedy but the, <laughs> my thing about those were to serve a specific purpose of hanging trying to do a flag off a chicken wire fence yes so that which actually was yeah. quite sore but generally like you, you need to, the calluses will build up and I've ripped one before and occasionally you see people they like post a picture of it ripped when they've yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's not nice I wouldn't I'd, I wouldn't go I wouldn't be I personally wouldn't be showing off about ripping a callus off my, off my hand um, but it is something that you your hands do get more used to I don't ever wear or do anything with them now no. um, it's almost like it's a you've got to go through a little bit of a difficult phase to get to somewhere better and, and, and yeah. unfortunately calluses on the hands for the girls I know it's not like that pretty and I actually would think that, that I've got my wife when she does any more body weight stuff like she'll tend to want to get uh, some gloves on or something because it yeah. just she doesn't want dirty calluses on her hands but whereas from my perspective as a bloke I'm not really that bothered um, so I think it's, it's probably it's maybe in that sort of situation if you if you, if you want to keep your hands looking fresh then that's cool um, if not from a bloke's perspective it, it actually helps not having the gloves on like I think just in terms of working the grip so actually having to hold the bar maximally so you'd be getting the benefits of grip strength training at the same time and all the great stuff that that does for the shoulders um, I think as well just the I don't like the idea when we move into uh, like everything in this kind of day and age can become a little bit sort of watered down. I just think like my granddad was a farmer and I think my granddad had great hands like because he was just farmer's hands. Yeah, like, yeah, it was. And it was just sort of I, I just think we should be 
embracing that side of the training and ultimately when you build up that resistance um you're gonna it's gonna yeah. just help you along the term training yeah, and it's a, like a guitar player they get cuts on the fingertips but that's just a, it's just a yeah. product of, of they can't play guitar in, in gloves so you don't even have an option yeah and you just to touch on some a good point you made like about the, the the benefit of working on your grip and the 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 benefit that has on your on your shoulder strength and your rotator cuff that also if it, if your grip is the weakest part of your of the chain then that's something they need to need to need to work and train on like when when I was back playing rugby we weren't allowed to use any um, straps or anything for for gripping bars deadlifting and if if we'd say to the coach oh I could, I could probably do more but it's my grip that's going he'd say well then work your flipping grip because that's mm. the weakest part of the chain and if that is for you like on your pull-ups for instance the weakest part of your chain then to get better then you are gonna it is a good thing to work on that if it gets sore and they're, they're not torn like Jacko said I've done that before I had a terrible took one off and yeah. when they get to the like if you get calluses and they get to a bit of a point where they, they actually need rubbing down a pumice stone or something yeah, just to that take the top actually off and actually does help quite yeah. a bit um, but if they're sore then you're going to have to give them a bit of time to heal up they will get stronger they will, they will recover but um, training on the sore hands and yeah, it's, it's almost, I'm not going to say a rite of passage because it makes it sound like you've got to go through some terrible yeah. trauma to be a calisthenics, uh, let's call it athlete, or to train calisthenics. No. It is literally just something yeah. that comes with the like territory. Like a pumice stone to drop them down, I pick them a little bit, but just, yeah, not letting them build up too much. Yeah. Not like, you don't want them to to rip off, that's for sure. Yeah, Jack could choose so. him. <laughs> um, okay, so thanks for watching if you have questions please comment below and we will answer them in uh, our next uh, Q&A um, so comment below or you can message us on any of our social medias uh, Instagram Twitter Facebook um, if you uh, haven't yet subscribed make sure you click subscribe here um, if you um, haven't downloaded our free beginners guide that's for you and that is down there you can click that from the website it's free it's actually really good it is I'll really definitely good. get it again and then if you haven't seen the previous q a then click up by tim's head up there and you will get that video we look forward to seeing you next time thanks for your questions guys class dismissed <laughs>